Hey, what's up guys, Aaron Bennett here. In this video, I'm gonna go over Celsius, the short squeeze, what happened with their loans. I'm gonna talk a little bit about self-custody, crypto.com, and what's been happening in the crypto world. I'm gonna talk about some rumors with KuCoin, Peter Schiff getting locked out of his bank accounts, which is very ironic, and also another platform that just halted withdrawals and what this means for the entire space moving forward. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about Simon Dixon and everything that's going on with him and his propositions to help Celsius. So I want to start out right here with the maker loan. They lowered their liquidation price to below $5,000. So July 4th today, they paid $50 million and then $64 million in die to their vault, thus lowering the liquidation price. Now I'm looking at this like a very, very good thing. It means that they are trying to basically make things right and not get liquidated. Some people I've heard have different perspectives on why they're doing this. Some people are like, hey, why aren't they just giving us that money, etc, etc. I am looking at this from a positive perspective that they are trying to keep this business alive and making themselves right moving forward. So let's talk a little bit about the sell short squeeze. If I go to the last 24 hours, you have Celsius network up 17.7% at a dollar four cents. Take a look at plan C. He says it appears FTX is sell token insolvent. There are less tokens currently on their exchange than tokens needed for the current shorts to close their positions. And there's a site created right now if you are interested in this called sellsqueeze.com where they are updating everybody on the important aspects of this squeeze. If you are taking part of this squeeze, basically this is very risky. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Definitely not financial advice coming from me. I am merely reporting on what's going on inside this community. And I want to talk a little bit about Simon Dixon right now. There are some people in the community who are very vocal, basically not trusting Simon. And the criticism is kind of strange. It's the fact that he and Max Kaiser work together and Max Kaiser has been a altcoin hater and has wanted sell token to go to zero. And recently, Max Kaiser is like, everybody should go follow Simon Dixon. So some people are seeing this as a conflict of interest or like, what's going on here? Is Simon trying to basically acquire Celsius at a discount? Is Simon the one creating all the FUD and all the sources that are talking to Goldman saying that they have holes in their balance sheet? Is Simon trying to do basically like a predatory takeover? What he's saying he's trying to avoid happen from someone like Goldman Sachs. So there's a lot of speculations and allegations being thrown around on Twitter. I'm not entertaining any of it, really. I am really listening to what Simon says and other people that I really, really trust inside of this space. So I will be talking more about that in the future. But know if you catch any of these types of conspiracy theories about what's going on with Simon or with Max Kaiser or about him versus Alex or all of the stuff that's going on, it's basically just noise at this point for me. So I want to talk about this quick story, just kind of switching gears for a second. Peter Schiff's bank closure strengthens Bitcoin's case for financial freedom. So without going into all the details, the irony, as this guy says, is that Peter Schiff, don't you realize that if you had been using Bitcoin, this would never have happened? So Peter Schiff here says that Puerto Rico regulators closed his bank account for some issues that he did not even know were a problem. So the irony is that Peter Schiff has always been a Bitcoin hater. And if he had been using Bitcoin hypothetically, nobody could have shut down his Bitcoin account if it is stored on your own wallet or where you're holding the keys. And that's kind of what I want to talk about right now. So in my last video, I talked about it may be a good idea to take your crypto off of centralized exchanges or just bring them onto big tier one exchanges. I did mention crypto.com as being one where personally, I'm not storing a lot of my crypto anymore, only what I need for the card. And the reason I thought that was important is because I feel more of these closures, more of this contagion, more issues are going to happen. Right here, taking a look at this story that came out today, July 4th, crypto lending platform Vald halts operations citing financial difficulties. So Vald stated that they faced withdrawal totaling basically $200 million since June 12th. Their revenues plummeted, they had to lay off 30% of its staff last month, and they basically could not provide the liquidity in order for everybody to withdraw their crypto. So if your guys' crypto is locked up in crypto.com, you know, obviously you can't do anything if it's in one of their earned products. But if it is just sitting there inside of, you know, something like Vault or something similar where you're earning yield, any type of smaller yield generation platform, I highly suggest you take it out if it's liquid, if you're able to, and move it into a self-custody wallet like Exodus, 
like a hardware wallet or even something like MetaMask. And two final stories, there were some rumors spreading on Twitter about KuCoin being insolvent and halting withdrawals. Now, I recently took some money off of KuCoin. I had no issue. But if I had the majority of my net worth on KuCoin, now is a good time to consider taking it off. Again, it's not financial advice, but if it were me, that's what I would be looking at right now. And similar allegations started around Circle. So basically what's happening is there is FUD being thrown around everywhere right now. And a lot of it's actually not fake. It's legit concerns or legit problems that companies are facing. But Circle was at the receiving end of this. Basically, they are the company behind USDC. And I won't go through the entire thread, but their CEO basically came and did this long Twitter thread about two days ago talking all about why they are not in any trouble. There was this infographic or whatever it's called that somebody made talking all about how Circle's on the brink of financial bankruptcy. And the CEO was like, mm, no, it's not. And Circle has a lot of information about how they are audited very, very regularly and how they have tremendous amount of transparency. Now, personally, myself, I hold a lot of USDC. And if there is any issue, I will let you know and I will be just converting that USDC to dollars. If that starts losing its peg, I am freaking out of there. I've looked at the history of USDC. I've seen it drop to like 98 to 99 cents before, but it's never lost like 10% of its peg to the dollar or anything like that. So guys, that's it for the video. Just wanted to give you a couple updates about some interesting stories, also about the updates with Celsius. So guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.